There we go. This is a updraft wood chip gasifier model that I've been playing with. Uh, it burns um, wood chips. Uh, I'll show you the fuel here. So these are these are whole tree chips. They're just a tree uh, wood and bark fed through a chipper. These were dropped off uh, by the power company because they were tripping, uh, cleaning up lines everywhere. So this is uh, this is a gasifier, a counter current updraft gasifier, and it means that it burns in two distinct zones. Uh, the first is in this area it is burning upward um, so there's fuel up here and air is coming up through the grate and uh, there's a combustion zone here but quickly this air is deprived of oxygen and, and can't burn anymore but it's hot. So it goes up here and it, it continues to kind of cook the, the wood chips that are inside it and uh, it also gets, you know, the wood chips that are coming down, the fuel is coming down this way. Uh, these are drying in the hot gas, but not burning. So then up here, we inject more air through a bunch of holes here, and then we have a, a big fire up here. So uh, overall, air is going in this direction here, up the column, and fuel is coming down the column this way. And what happens is, this also acts as an, a large filter. So the dust and the ash particles coming this way essentially get trapped in the flow of fuel coming down. So very little of that dust and ash makes it out the top. And uh, really everything gets burned to clean ash before it drops into this area. I'm just going to show you the insides quickly. Okay, here we're looking in those two side holes here. Um, so this is the area where the fuel piles up in here, then we ignite it and burn it this way, forcing air in through here and it has to go up there. Uh, then there's some, there's a divider in here made out of some fiberglass that lets me apply air to this area and shove it up the tube or apply it to this area and force it in here and force it through these holes. So inside here there is a, a steel tube and uh, it is divided from the chamber below by some insulation. So we can supply air individually to here and to here and uh, that lets us kind of regulate. This is the primary airflow regulating the power determines how much the rate of gasification of the fuel and this uh, the air up here determines the air to fuel ratio the uh, the equivalence ratio or the sto stoichiometry of the reaction and so we want to get a nice complete burn here but not too much air okay and the next uh, the next important piece is the air supply so I have to be able to apply air pressure to here and to here vary the air pressure tune tune this ratio and also not permit uh, an oversupply here to basically reverse the flow, which happened to me uh, in my first version. Okay, the way I uh, got over the airflow problem was I built this box, which is supplied by a, uh, a fan here. So the box is pressurized by a fan. And then I have these two ports um, that are separate ports and they're valved, so I have these uh, tiny sticks here operate some valves which um, open and close the uh, supply air. So this way uh, the, these two ports are share a common pressure source so there's very little risk of backflow. So if I open one up all the way uh, there's still very little risk of backflow through this uh, valve. So that's that's what this is. And it's just held together with some rubber bands. This was previously my daughter's science fair project. So all it is is another, another cardboard construction just with these simple gate valves, I guess. Yeah, 
there's just, uh, I don't know how much detail is required on this sort of thing. Okay, and then uh, it's all shoved together with uh, some aluminum ducting, and it's uh, run on a power supply so that I can control both the overall pressure as well as the variable pressure. The first scoop I'm putting in is some um, commercial wood pellets. Uh, I want to try to get it through that initial phase because it makes a ton of smoke when it's starting up. The wood pellets are at least uh, dry already. Okay, and then I'm loading on top of that these uh, wood chips. Um, they're uh, whole tree chips. They're pretty green. They're probably about 35% moisture. And I'm putting, a, putting quite a load of those in. I'm going to have to reload as we're burning. So I'm trying to fill the column up to the secondary airport. So I'm up to about I'm up to about there with wood chips. Okay. Here we go. Now I have to put the air supply together quickly. Okay, so far so good. So during startup it uh, makes a ton of smoke. the fuel traveling down. The, uh, the sin gas that's being produced burns really clean. When it's burning you might not even be able to see anything. Okay, we're starting to, starting to get very combustible. Sustaining combustion itself. But still, it hasn't uh, hasn't gotten down into the column. A little more air. There we go. Switch is right over, and now it's combusting. Uh, right in that secondary air zone. I'm going to go add some more fuel. I have to try to keep up with the, the consumption of fuel. Almost choked it there. I can see the uh, you can see the combustion in the top and the place where it's burning. It's burning above the pile of wood chips. The wood chips are just kind of turning into a cloud. You can kind of see the, uh, the wood gas coming in on top of the pile, mixing with those air jets and, uh, and burning pretty cleanly. If there was some refractory in there to help maintain the heat, it would it would help a lot too. So the dream would be to to auger fuel automatically into this zone, so the fuel kind of constantly goes up and and down here. Really, this distance is kind of arbitrary, like, really you'd like this zone to be much longer so that you have more of a reserve of that dry wood. Okay, I'm going to dial it back up to full power blast it out, burn it out. So I've just taken the fan up to full voltage. Plus a volt.
So that fire is just about to burn through from below. Uh, the fuel has been consumed and it's uh, the fire from below in the, in the primary air is going to start bursting through the pile. So I'm just going to turn things way down so it doesn't blow ash and cinders all over. Okay, I'm going to let things burn out entirely and we'll come back to look at the char that's left over. So this is the bottom end cap and this is what's left over, just this clean ash. Completely decharred, no carbon in it at all.